Everyone fears a run on the bank, but the action can be more than a community nightmare. It can also bring down other institutions in the sector when it becomes a panic. New research by INSEAD professors Henrik Grieve and Jay Kim look at bank panics and how community affects them. Gentlemen, welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Your recent working paper, Running for the Exit, Community Cohesion and Bank Panics, claims these bank runs, the, and, and eventually a panic, uh, bring down other institutions in the sector in the process. How does this happen? It is probably important to define what bank run and bank panic really mean. And bank run happens when a number, large number of bank customers rush to the bank, to their bank, and then withdraw their deposits. Right? So when, when the bank customers fear that their bank might be financially dressed, distressed and may, may face an imminent failure in the near future, and they want to they wanna get their money back before others do. In that case, they rush to their bank and then withdraw their money from the bank. That is the bank run. And bank panic takes place when a large number of bank runs happen. You know that some of the, some bank runs happen, and those bank runs spread throughout the larger geographic area in a relatively short period of time. That is referred to as a bank run, bank panic. And throughout the history, there have been quite a few bank runs. For example, in the United States, there were major bank panics in, at the at the end of the 19th century and early 20th centuries. And also, more recently, in the UK, there was a bank panic in the 1970s. And then there were Scandinavian banking crises in the 1990s. And of course, during the recent 2008 financial crisis, there were scattered bank runs throughout the world. You know, there were the bank runs in the US, there were some bank runs in the Europe, and also there were some bank runs in Asia, including Korea and some Indonesia. So the bank, bank panic, I, I will talk a little more about how they spread, but you know, the bank, bank panic can bring down the banking institution because bank customers rush to the, their bank and withdraw their money, making the bank insufficient per operating fund. So then the bank had to close their operation. You also went back through history and looked at a bank run in 1893. And the interesting thing was that some of the other local banks in the, in the area were spared from the, the panic. Um, why was this the case? So what saved uh, some of them was uh, the diversity of their communities. Uh, so in a community, people can be different on various dimensions. And the important ones in those uh, days were the nation of origin, because they were immigrants mostly. Uh, they were the wealth, of course and also the religion. And in fact, we found that uh, communities with a high diversity on any of those uh, were less likely to have, uh, have a bank run. Now, why is that? Uh, well, uh, I think it was Warren Buffett who had the line that if you see a line outside your bank, uh, join it. <laughs> you know, that's how bank runs happen. Uh, but a line of one, you probably wouldn't join. <laughs> so the, the point is, how many people does it take in order for a bank run uh, to really spread. Now, if a community can agree that the bank is really going poorly, if many, many people panic at the same time, then you have a real bank, and then the bank is in, in danger. Now, if they can't agree, that probably means they're not talking to each other very much, or they don't totally trust each other. So if church diversity saved the banks, well, maybe communication between Methodists and Baptists wasn't you know, quite ideal. And maybe they didn't totally trust each other. Maybe the, those of, of English origin and those of Irish origin didn't totally trust each other. Maybe the rich and the poor didn't communicate as much. And strangely, those things that actually split the community uh, then made it easier for banks to survive uh, because panics didn't spread so quickly. There were lines of one instead of lines of everybody. And how can banks protect themselves? How can they essentially separate themselves from this sentiment? It is a very uh, serious question for the banks because uh, there are two things they can do and, and neither of them uh, is necessarily easy. One is to what extent can they disconnect themselves from other banks in the sense that uh, once there is a bank run somewhere else, if there is a panic, uh, their customers won't think well, because of this other bank, maybe my bank is in trouble too. So the disconnection with other banks is one thing. The other thing is the connection with the community. 
Uh, so how much uh, trust can they get from their local community? Um, and, and that one is, is also really building up reputation gradually. And it, it's hard because uh, you may trust your bank in, uh, in everyday life and, and in a non-crisis situation, but perhaps you'll think about it a little differently in a panic. Um, so those are, are the two that you would normally think about. The third one, which, which we then uh, discovered through, through our research, is simply make sure that your, your customers don't all agree with each other all the time. <laughs> Uh, because that's the threatening part. I mean, it's fine if they agree that you're, you're great. Um, it's a disaster if they uh, agree that uh, you're in trouble. It's actually okay if some of them, but not all, think that you're in trouble. How can banks keep this disagreement in the communities? Can they perhaps foster uh, particular community influences in order to do this? One thing they can do is actually to stop doing some of the things things that in terms of being selective in customers that many banks uh, mm. are. I mean, niche selection and niche marketing mm. uh, is important in most kinds of business. Uh, and, and it's followed in banking as well. Uh, but the better you are at selecting a niche, the more homogeneous your customers mm. will be, mm. uh, which is probably fine in a non-crisis condition. Mm. But once a financial panic is on its way, that's exactly the position you don't want to have. So in homogeneous societies, what can perhaps word of mouth marketing do? The implication of our findings is very, very clear. If you are located in a homogeneous community, then you are more likely to be negatively influenced by any bad rumors or bad reputational damage, you know, such as bank run. However, it is also to edge the sword, I, we believe, that because you know, that if you are in a homogeneous society, and if you can create some sort of a goodwill, or good word of mouth marketing that actually could transfer to other to throughout the community quite well, and I think you know it's, I think we have seen this a lot in uh, homogeneous homogeneous communities like uh, Korea or Japan. For example, Koreans and Korea and Japan, the population is very very homogeneous. You know, on the other hand, uh, Indonesia and Malaysia, uh, the the population is very heterogeneous. So there's some, if, if you create a, some very popular product in Korea or in Japan, sometimes they become tremendously popular throughout the country because of the population is very homogeneous. And if, so, if your friends have that uh, specific product, and I also want to have that, uh, that product. So the word of mouth and then goodwill also transfers in those homogeneous co communities very, very well. I think I have an interesting example. I got this, you know, this is a Rivet Dong bag and it is called the Monogram Speedy Bag, I believe. This is hugely popular in Korea. And this is called in Korea as the three minute bag. That's because if you are standing in the, the downtown Seoul and then just watch the ladies passing by and you can spot this bag in every three minutes. It's so popular that it is it's more popular than the school backpack or East Pack. So the reason I, 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 we haven't done the study on this, but my, uh, my kind of guess is that this, is become, this, is, this kind of products become so popular in a very short period of time because the Korean society is very homogeneous. If you see a movie star carrying this bag, and then they are most likely to be a Korean, and I'm a Korean lady, then immediately associate yourself to that person and also want to have that, to possess that bag. So this homogeneous, ethnic homogeneous, homogeneity also has a very interesting impact if you could create a positive image or the positive word of mouth. Thank you both for joining me on NCI Knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you.